All right, Tim, with that, my eight being stated, the floor is yours. Wow. That's a really, really good top eight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can top your top eight. I think you can. Maybe I might have an ace up my sleeve. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Let's start at the top. No place to start like number one. Okay. My number one is the last of the territories, Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Mm, what a great promotion. That was a fantastic promotion based out of Knoxville in the early 1990s. I believe it ran from late 1991 until 1995. Mm -hmm. Not an extraordinarily long run, but we've had a lot of territories throughout the years that didn't have particularly long runs. So a three to four or five year run, I think is a good amount of time during that part of history. Mm -hmm. We're at some of the worst times in the history of professional wrestling. In the history of national promotions, WCW just tanking right, terribly to the With point... With the legend of NWA backing it. Tanking to the point where WCW is not running house shows anymore and is running television tapings out of Universal Studios in Florida on multiple days. Uh, say, for instance... Uh, they're running uh, on Monday, and they're running five or six different syndicated television shows on one day. They're taping all those episodes in one day, which was unheard of mm -hmm. at the time. And then on Tuesday, they tape another six or seven episodes. And then on Wednesday, another six or seven episodes. So they will clearly have 16, 18 episodes in the can which would end up causing them problems later. Say, for instance, they're running a pay-per-view and they have all this television set up for a certain match at the pay-per-view and that person ends up leaving the promotion or that person ends up being injured. Then there's no way to go back and change the television. If you're doing episodic television weekly, it's a lot easier to make those sorts of Switches. Adjustments, right. Right. You can switch in and out a lot easier. This television's already been produced, and it's really hard to make any sort of change in the television matches. And it's not so easy to change the commentary either. Right. So you're really stuck in a certain program. And if something's not working out, you have no way to, to change the course. If you don't think... Rick Flair and Rick Rude is going to draw, you're really pigeonholed into that because all the television leading up to that pay-per-view is telling the story to lead to that match. Right. And you have no way to change it. So at that period of time, WCW was doing terrible. And WWF as well it was not a good time. Their television ratings were... Way down. Very down. Mm -hmm. And their... And the characters that they were presenting on television were not very well received either. Yeah. It was a time of transition for them. They were transitioning from the Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior era to the Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels type wrestlers mm -hmm. who were a lot smaller much more talented in the right. ring, but very different from the style of wrestling that people were used to seeing in the late 1980s. And that took a lot of getting used to. And that was a period of transition where things weren't really on fire. You're making a lot of changes and you're making a lot of yes. quick changes at the time. And people are slowly getting adjusted to your new product. So that wasn't a real good time for the WWF either. Amidst all that, we have Smoky Mountain Wrestling, who's trying to present a very serious 
Southern-based wrestling product. A very traditional type promotion with its roots in Southern wrestling. Yes. Yep. So the worst time in wrestling history to draw a crowd, that's when they start. Right. So the deck was... Stacked against them? Stacked against them from the very beginning. And they still had a three or four year run. Mm -hmm. And during that time, they did have some really, really good drawing events. Uh, Some of their events in Knoxville later on drew four or 5,000 people. I was at the very first Bluegrass Brawl in Pikeville, Kentucky, where... There was a line outside the building, and people stood inside for the entire card from start to bottom. There were no more seats left. Wow. You couldn't fit any more people in that building. Uh, people were standing, and the people that were standing behind the seats on the floor were just happy that they could get in the building. I didn't hear anyone complain that they had to stand all night. They were just happy that they were there and got to see this great card of wrestling. It was amazing. And the electricity in the crowd was off the hook. Mm -hmm. Just to hear the buzz around everything, it was just really, really special. So Smoky Mountain has to be my number one. Uh, They had a very good television network throughout the uh, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, and into North Carolina area. Uh, very strong television every week they were on uh, with a one hour syndicated television show. And they were on good broadcast stations. They were on like NBC and ABC and CBS. So they had some very good uh, television outlets as well. So that would have to be my number one. Excellent pick. Way to start it off. Great job with that, too, Tim. And what a great roster of talent that they had. Incredible. They had a roster of talent that could work their behinds off. The Rock and Roll Express, Tracy Smothers, Dirty White Boy, The Heavenly Bodies. Mm -hmm. Just uh, amazing. The Fantastics at the beginning. Uh, Hector Guerrero, Ivan Koloff at the beginning. Uh, they just Ronnie Garvin, Paul Warndorf, just a, a Chris Candido and Lance Storm. Later you know? on, Chris yeah. Candido and Lance Storm, yeah, and and Tim Horner, yeah. just a really, really good, solid crew. The Armstrongs involved, but with behind the scenes, the Armstrongs, Jim and, and Cornette behind the scenes, Bullet Bob Armstrong as the commissioner, commissioner. just an excellent choice as the face of the promotion. Uh, people could identify with him, and he was so good. At what he did, and such a good talker too. Yes. Just overall, very very good. All right, Tim, that's a fabulous number one. I don't even know how how I don't have that on my list. I feel so much dumber not having that on my list. But that's why we do these types of things. Well, it's everyone's perspective. I mean, everyone has their own idea of what they like and what they appreciate in wrestling, and. I could see how you could... There's so many good promotions to pick. It is. It's tough. It's tough. And I'll be honest with you. I don't have the Pacific Northwest on my list. Right. So, I probably should, but I don't. Well, speaking of the list, what's your next? What's your number two? My number two would have to be Memphis. (laughs) Territory style. Territory style. Didn't matter what the promotion name was. It was Memphis wrestling to me. Right. What a great tradition of wrestling. And I'm so glad I had the opportunity to travel and got to see some of uh, the latter days of Memphis wrestling. Mm -hmm. What a treat that was. Memphis would run so hot and so cold sometimes that it was crazy. But in the good times, good Memphis wrestling was hard to top. It was hard to top Jerry Lawler and Eddie Gilbert, Austin Idol, Tommy Rich, Paul E. Dangerously. Bill Dundee. Bill Dundee, a great overlooked name from the past. The talent that came through Memphis was incredible. 
And the presentation there was great. They ran weekly in Memphis, every Monday night in Memphis. And there were weeks and weeks where they sold out. One week after another, selling Sorry. out the same building. And the fact that at one point, 50 to 60 percent of the television viewers on Saturday morning were tuned into Memphis wrestling. Right. It's just incredible to think about today. Think how well it traveled, too. Look at the feud with the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express, how that transcended everything and the roots that are tied. Back down to Memphis. Ricky and Robert really established themselves there in Memphis. Uh, multiple runs with the Rock and Roll Express where they would leave and then come back again. Uh, even before the Rock and Roll Express, there was Stan Lane and Steve Kern right, the as the Fabulous one. Ones. Absolutely. Kamala. Yeah. The talent that came through there. Bam Bam Bigelow. It was just incredible. And some of the wild, crazy matches that they would have. Uh, especially that time when there was a hair match between Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee. Mm -hmm. And Bill Dundee ends up putting his wife's hair on the line. It's awesome. And loses. And his wife has to get her head shaved. Incredible. <laughs> Who would not come out to see that? It's just an incredible spectacle that you would want to come out and see. It's just amazing. Incredible times, incredible talent. Transcends, like we've talked about, the wrestling world itself. Because if you really think about the gimmicks and the angles and the stories that were used in, in Mid-South, they wound up spread out all over the country because they were so effective and good. They were amazing. I mean, not only the wrestlers... But you had Jim Cornette with his roots in Memphis wrestling. Right. Jimmy Hart. Uh, some of the greatest managers ever, ever to come out of that area. That's hard to hard to argue with that one. Well, Tim, thinking about it, who's going to be your number three then? Number three. It would have to be Ohio Valley Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Based out of Louisville. Right. My favorite era of Ohio Valley Wrestling would have to be in the early 2000s when Jim Cornette was booking it. And the talent there was amazing as well with weekly television right, and some really big quarterly cards at buildings like the Louisville Gardens. And they also had some really, really big events at uh, fairs and... Amusement parks, that sort of thing. Uh, but the Louisville Gardens with a long history of wrestling throughout the years. The talent that they had was really top-notch. Rob Conway, Nick Dinsmore mm -hmm. as Mr. Wrestling, Flash Flanagan, yep. Mr. Black, Randy Orton getting his Early, start right, right. there. Uh, Brock Lesnar, Shelton mm -hmm. Benjamin. Just a who's who of wrestling at that time. Amazing talent roster. The weekly television presentation was really good there. So I can't say enough about all the talent that they developed there at Ohio Valley Wrestling. And during that time period, they were just on fire. Right. Some of the best television wrestling that I've seen was from around that time, around 2001. I just thought it was an excellent promotion. Very underrated, and now still running today under the guidance of Al Snow. And you're right, the longevity uh, of the program itself. Oh, the longevity is incredible. Uh, running a weekly television show for almost 20 years. Just amazing. It is. It is. And at one time being a developmental territory for the WWE. WWE. Yep. It's great. Although they're no longer affiliated with the WWE, Al Snow's taken over. And I think he's doing an outstanding job there. Awesome. Well, where would you go with your number four then? Number four. My fourth favorite. I would have to say Wrestling Independent Network. Win. Yes. It has a lot of good memories. A lot of good shows that they did. 
Yes. Although it was a short period of time that they ran, all their events were really good quality, top notch, independent cards, which you could hang your hat on. If you were a fan of independent yeah. wrestling, you didn't want to miss one of their events. The presentation was really good. We've talked about some of the top matches there yeah. before. Bam Bam Bigelow and the Honky Tonk Man. And at the very first card, the Honky Tonk Man and Nikolai Volkov. What a great main event that was. One of the other big matches from the Wrestling Independent Network that I'll remember for years to come. Bob Backlund versus Paul Warndorf. Talk about a legendary match. Uh, it, it was just done so well. Not only the top matches but the undercard top notch wrestlers from top to bottom you're right when you said that you had to have a certain level of wrestling ability and a certain level of talent and a certain level of experience although ed and jeff capel were very very good at eyeing new talent they didn't just allow anyone into the ranks it was good from top to bottom it was well thought out a very good product which i enjoyed a lot and i was really glad to be part of it i know we've talked about this in the past but that very first win card in dundalk made a lasting impression on a lot of people not only in baltimore not only in maryland but throughout the mid-atlantic there were ripples that turned into waves about that card when people found out how well it drew and the fact that there weren't enough seats to go around. Right. You're talking 2,000 people into that. And I mean, the, we've shown, shown video of the, the crowd in the past there, and it is incredible. It was incredible just to be there at the beginning of the night and watch the people come in. And they kept coming and coming and coming in. And at one point, there was a little lull in the people coming in. And I thought, well, we've reached we the capacity. But then all of a sudden, it started again. And people kept coming in left and right. And it was quite an experience just to see the size of the crowd that night. It really proved to a lot of people that Ed and Jeff's vision could be successful and was successful. All right, Tim. Excellent so far. How about your number five? Number five has to be Northeast Wrestling. Okay. It began in 1995 and is still running currently today. 25 years. Wow. Top-notch wrestling. This promotion runs like a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. It's like a small WWE. It features all the top stars from all the different promotions. It has people like Matt Taven from Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. It's featured people like Marty Skrull, Cody Rhodes, Kurt Angle, Christian, Samoa Joe. Right. Big, big stars over the years. Jerry the King Lawler. Sid Vicious. And some of the early shows featured Bam Bam Bigelow. Mm -hmm. Doink the Clown. Bob Backlund. Mm -hmm. A legend. Yep. Former world champion, Bob Backlund. A who's who of wrestling. Special appearances by Ric Flair. Terry Funk, Jim Cornette, Mick Foley. It's just amazing. Jushin Liger. Right. The lineup just goes on and on and on. And great local talent like King Brian Anthony. One of the best in the Northeast, in my opinion. Just top-notch presentation. When you think about top independent promotions, Northeast Wrestling has to pop into your mind. And the crowds. Incredible crowds. Uh, they've always said that wrestling doesn't draw well in the summertime. Well, over the last few years, they have done cards at minor league baseball stadiums 
Some of them drawing three to five thousand fans. My fans, just incredible uh, drawing power throughout the years, and running all throughout the Northeast, particularly in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New York, all throughout that area, and doing really good business and putting together really good cards. Right, and just the, top notch, class, class, yes, and. You've also are part of that class because, if I'm not mistaken, you are a member of its honored Hall of Honors, right? I am part of the Northeast Wrestling Hall of Fame. There you go. And I want to thank promoter Michael Lombardi for inducting me into that Hall of Fame back in 2009. Absolutely. That is awesome. That is. That's a great memory. Yeah, 100%. And again, like you said, class. Class. Top notch all the way. Really good crowds, really good talent, really good presentation. Nothing is done unless it's done correctly there. Right. This is like Barman Bailey. It's the best circus. It's so well run. I can't compare it to other independent promotions because it's that good. And I think people would take offense if you just threw that in with every other independent promotion out there because it's something special. Right. It's something a little bit different than everything else. Well, speaking of different, Tim, how about a different number? Your number six. Number six. Another Southern Wrestling promotion. Showtime All-Star Wrestling. All-Saw. Saw Wrestling. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Started out as a very, very small promotion in a small rundown building which probably was two steps from the wrecking ball mm -hmm. but they did so much work there when you saw their television product you wouldn't even know they painted that building they set up lights in that building they made the best out of what they had and it wasn't much but believe me when you watch that television product you didn't know because the presentation was so good. so good. And it started out with not a lot of talent. But there was a lot of thought behind the presentation. And how to get the best out of, out of everyone involved there. And it worked really, really well. And it evolved. And it got better and better and better. And it had a nice weekly television it had a nice weekly television outlet in Nashville on the UPN network, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was on every week right before Ring of Honor. So it had a good television network. It had a good following. Uh, it could draw very well. When they moved into uh, the bigger buildings like the Nashville Fairgrounds, uh, one night with Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas as a main event, it drew well over a thousand people for those two names and they were national names in tna right but they really made them something special when they highlighted them in saw that is and awesome. so those two names from nashville did over a thousand paid at the fairgrounds at one point it's really really good talent too really good unknown talent that was really brought to the forefront. People like Derek King and Jesse Emerson and Mr. Teen Excitement uh -huh. really made their names there. Uh, it was really an exciting promotion. It was well done. Really good episodic television. Uh, really good announcing. Uh, Michael Graham and Rena Riggins were the announcers and sometimes joined by Dutch Mantel. Uh, really, really good stuff. And if you get a chance and you're out on YouTube, you should really take uh, the opportunity to, to take it. a look at it. Yeah, it's awesome. really well done. Uh, a very tight budget, but very well done Most at the same time. Biggest bang for your buck. Please. They sure did. They got a lot of bang for not having a huge amount of money. As a matter of fact, Terry Taylor got to see one of the shows one time. And he was very, very complimentary of it. As a matter of fact, when they were based out of Nashville, when TNA was based out of Nashville, 
I think uh, some of the executives there would tune into it. To take a look. Every week to take a look at what was going on there. Very interesting promotion. Very good promotion for its time. Yeah. Well, Tim, how about your number seven? Well, number seven and number eight, I'm going to put them together. Okay. In no particular order between seven and eight. Okay. Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance, based out of Kaiser, West Virginia. Okay. And Primal Conflict Wrestling, which is also based out of West Virginia, but more towards the Martinsburg, West Virginia area. Okay. Both very good independent promotions. Uh, very good presentation featuring really, really top-notch talent. Uh, the presentation on these two promotions is a step above everything else in that West Virginia yeah. area. Tyler Steele's done a great job. Tyler Steele's done a great job. The Davis brothers have done an excellent job with Elite Pro over the years, uh, drawing some really good crowds uh, at the local college in Kaiser, seven, eight hundred, a thousand people. Right. The Ransom uh, Civic Center that they've drawn in. The Ransom Civic Center that Tyler Cates has run, done very good business there. Yeah. Uh, just really top notch talent. People like Bobby Shields in Primal Conflict Wrestling. Uh, Dirty, Dirty Money yeah. just really has made a great name for himself there. A local star. Uh, Drawlix with Black Wall Street just been fantastic yeah. there. Uh, Nui, Tofiga, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, another very underrated, top-notch wrestler. Uh, Ken Dixon. Yes. Uh, the former Napalm Bomb. Right. Uh, was really, really made great strides from when he started and to uh, where he is now with Primal Conflict Wrestling. Just some really well-thought-out events for both Primal Conflict and Elite Pro. Elite Pro... Has some very good talent there. Uh, Reggie Collins, a Shane Malice. Uh, it just goes on and on. So uh, really featuring a lot of the homegrown talent for both promotions and putting them in the best light. And again, presenting a product at a reasonable price and the fans getting more than their money's worth each and every show. Absolutely. The thing I enjoy about them is they're not afraid to take chances either. Bringing in people like Coco Beware, bring, bringing in Sean Walton and X-Pac, and, and doing some different things. So, again, very enjoyable, very reasonable, very great product. Incorporating the legends. Yes. Uh, and uh, Luke Gallows and Matt Hardy and, and wrestlers like that, incorporating some really, really good national names. Along with their product, the local and the uh, the mid Atlantic area based wrestlers, while bringing in the legends, certainly not taking the spotlight off of their local talent, right? And presenting them augmenting it in the best way, augmenting that talent. Yes, yes. very and that's what very you do good. as a promotion, and and very good uh, planning, uh, just very good overall businesses. Yes. Uh, well, I see our top eight in these organizations have some similarities, but there's a lot of difference, too. And I'm kind of interested in seeing what the fans think on their behalf. Maybe things that we haven't mentioned, because even though we've only gotten 16, really, maybe 15 total, that is a very big dichotomy. I really enjoy what we've done with this, and, and I'm interested in seeing what the, the fans think, or if the fans want to... Want to uh, you know, suggest a few others because I think we've really covered a great gambit here. That is a lot of area that we have covered. I agree. It is. So, friends, thank you for joining in on all these episodes of our Great Eight. Uh, collectively, the opening for the Great Eight season. We're looking forward to all the things that we're going to be able to present to you this season coming up. And we're hoping you stay with us to take those strolls down Concussion Lane as we present to you different topics every week. Tim, thank you so much. Well, thank you, and thank you everyone for watching.